What's going on everybody and welcome to WrestleMania 19, also known as XIX, as you can see here. They finally decided to bring the full Roman numerals back. We're no longer at X7 or X8, we're actually at Roman numerals again. Don't get used to them, they don't stick around for very long. Um, but we are here with WrestleMania 19, an overall decent card. Um, I also really enjoy the graphics that are coming out. You can definitely see that we are starting to advance a little bit in terms of the presentation that WWE is going after. This took place in Safeco Field in Seattle on March 30th, 2003. So this was one that I was watching live with my father. I mean, little 10 year old me. But we have a decent card there. As always, we have Rob's notes on the side. We have our 10 to zero scale here. Uh, 10 and nine is an A. Eight and seven is a B. Six through four is a C. Three and two is a D, one and zero is an F as always, but just so you can kind of put a number to Rob's ratings over there, that is how we're going to do it. We've got a couple of classics here once again, and we are going to discuss those, but we are going to kind of kick things off with a bit of a rockier number on this entry, and that is the uh, Cruiserweight Championship between Matt Hardy and Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio's WrestleMania debut ends in an unfortunate short match with an overbooked interference from Shannon Moore. He was there with Matt Hardy. Uh, Matt Hardy also ends up holding the ropes to get a relatively cheap pin out of it without really doing a whole lot of moves. Um, I feel like this match should have been given about five more minutes or so to really start to cook. I thought they started doing some things that were pretty decent towards the middle of this match. Uh, it honestly could have been a contender for opener of the... Of, of the of, opener of Wrestlemania honestly like this was a really good one and an extremely entertaining bout great back and forth uh, you know obviously Rey Mysterio is, is effectively a rookie in the WWE at this time so he is fully healthy he's fully in his youth doing all the flips and stuff that you expect from Rey Mysterio Matt Hardy is doing Matt Hardy things which you expect but unfortunately this match just I don't know, it just, it felt like it was lacking time, it, it was booked, uh, overbooked with interference for no reason that Matt Hardy didn't really need. Uh, I thought that he did hit a perfect, um, executed, uh, 619 in this match, but unfortunately because this match was so short, I couldn't really give it a B. I gave it a 6 out of 10, so a C+. Plus. Rob disagreed with one part. He still gave the match a B, agreed with me that he wished it was longer, but he did give it a 7. So obviously that 6.5 average will get bumped up to a 7, and so therefore, a 7 it is. Next up we have Undertaker versus Big Show and A-Train. Uh, this is uh, Undertaker's more mid-card run that he had as the American Badass. Uh, having to take on Big Show and A-Train alone because his partner was taken out. Uh, it was definitely a new stage added to this Undertaker WrestleMania streak. But unfortunately, it didn't really produce anything super over-the-top good. I do think that this match was a lot better than people think it is. I also think it's better than Rob's gave it here. I thought him and A-Train were excellent together. The Big Show kind of made things a little bit clunky, but I also thought that Undertaker was much more in shape in this run than he was in his previous ones. Um, I thought that he was a lot faster than you've seen him in his last couple of badass Taker runs, and I thought that him and A-Train had great chemistry amongst uh, all of them. Uh, the ending was pretty decent with um, his partner, who I'll be honest, I forgot to put his name down here. Uh... <laughs> Because <laughs> he's kind of useless in the grand scheme of things. He never really panned out outside of this match and outside of this year. Uh, comes out, helps him, takes out Big Show, allows him to set up the uh, last ride onto A-Train. Uh, ultimately, I thought this match had great chemistry, a great work rate. It was lacking that memorable moment that you expect from an Undertaker WrestleMania, at least in his later, uh, through the 20s, the WrestleMania 20s run. Um, without that single spot to really call its own or memorable moment, I thought this match was a 7 out of 10. 
I thought I, I it, it kept me entertained. It kept me engaged in the match the entire time. Even if it's missing that last little bit to get it over. I gave it a 7. Obviously, Rob disagreed, gave it a 5. So that average is going to come out to a 6, so a C+. I think it's still a serviceable spot here for this match. Um, I, th I, I know this match isn't necessarily popular amongst the online crowd, but... I actually disagree with them. I thought this match was a lot better uh, than it has been painted out to be. Next up, we have the women's title match between Trish Stratus, Jazz, and Victoria, with Trish Stratus winning, kind of her crowning achievement, if you will, sort of like the, the beginning of the Stratus faction movement, if you will. Uh, I thought Jazz and Victoria um, definitely viewed her as a threat. You could tell they were trying to take her out of this match mostly, um, especially earlier on, trying to work together to get her out. I thought they all worked extremely well together. Easily uh, the best work that any women's match has had so far. Trish is at her peak. Jazz is a beast. Victoria is great at working with both women. She has great chemistry with both. Gets a little clunky when all three of them are engaging at the same time. But as long as it was like a one-on-one -on -one affair for a moment, it was a fantastic match. Whether it was Victoria and Jazz, Victoria and Trish, Trish and Jazz, it all worked. I really enjoyed this match. Uh, the chair shot that Steven Richard took, uh, he was trying to hit Trish with it, bounce it off the rope. He, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if he realized how much that ricochet was going to be because he ate that chair shot square in the face. Uh, he hit it, it bounced off the rope, it came back, there was no catching it. He, <laughs> he took that shit straight off the dome. I thought it was hilarious. Um, Trish was hot with the crowd. The crowd loved her. The crowd was really loud for a women's match, which nowadays you get a lot more of. You didn't get it a lot back then. Um, I thought that, uh, having her win here was the right move. I thought the chick kick to win it was lethal. Perfect timing, perfect sell by Victoria. Far better match than I was expecting here, especially given that it was 10 years before the Divas Revolution era began. I gave this match a 7 out of 10 as well. Uh, Rob agrees with me. He thought this match was also really well done. Gave this match a B as well. So, ladies, 7 out of 10 is exactly where you're going, and you have earned it. Next up, we have the WWE Tag Team Champion Triple Threat between Team Angle, who were the title holders coming in, uh, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin versus Chris Benoit and Rhino and Los Guerreros, Chavo and Eddie. Uh, listen, any match that Eddie is in is going to be phenomenal. Uh, Chris Benoit was also great in this match as usual. Shelton Benjamin was great. Uh, the match obviously lost a little bit of step when it was time for Charlie, Rhino, or Chavo to get involved. But as long as the other three were in the match, it was phenomenal. Non-stop action from start to finish. It's hard to have a single moment stand out when you have a multi-tag match like this. All three teams did a great job in showcasing their individual awareness, their individual movesets, their own personalities, their own team chemistries. Uh, Benoit hit an insane Skyborne drop to Eddie uh, when he put into the crossface, like literally like Skyborne dropped it into the crossface. It was a phenomenal spot. I absolutely loved it. My jaw hit the floor. So did Eddie's, uh, <laughs> you know, because it was like, you know, the, the, the drop down head bounced off the rope, uh, off the, the mat. It was fantastic timing, fantastic selling. Um, lots of fast offense. Uh, honestly, a lot of moves that probably shouldn't would have won, but the other teams broke up pins. There was like eight or nine finishes in this match that I thought would have been adequate if it did end there. They gave this match plenty of time. Lots of back and forth. It wasn't just, you know, it, it really showed that the, the, tag, the, the tag division at this time was gaining steam and really had a lot of great moments in here. It wouldn't last per se, unfortunately, but it was no longer being carried by the Hardy Boys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. Edge and Christian were able to go off onto their own and be their own teams, or, or sorry, their own their own singles uh, careers without having to be on a team um, to, to carry this division. You, the division was in good hands this time. Uh, I thought every time uh, Rhino gored someone. I thought they were broken in half. It, it's his best. It really is only calling card, if being perfectly honest here. The man had a fantastic spear. Kind of lacked everywhere else, though. Uh, I thought that um, 
I, I do feel like um, the right team won here, given uh, the uh, Team Angle winning again, retaining their titles. I, I just thought they were the hot, the hot crowd, right? The, the hot faction with the crowd right now. And Shelton Benjamin has always had a really soft spot uh, in my heart for him. So I really enjoyed this match. I gave this match a B. I gave it an eight, so actually a B plus. Uh, I thought that with the zero downtime, a phenomenal ending. Needed a few more moments to cook to really hit that 9 out of 10 in my opinion, but I thought an 8 out of 10 was a very adequate spot for this. Rob slightly disagrees. He gave it a B-, minus, so he gave it a 7. It is going to average out to a 7.5, so it's still going to get an 8 uh, as far as everything is considered here. But overall, great tag match. Definitely needed for the division as a whole to not rely on those same three. Next up, we have Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho. An all-time classic. Me and Rob both gave this match an A. I gave it a 10. I believe he also gave it a 10 as well. But given that we are getting into the classics of WrestleMania heritage, I think me and Rob should discuss this match because this match, in my opinion, came out of nowhere to be a classic, and Rob seemed to agree. So for this week's match review, I always say this week's, this review's match review... <laughs> Let's talk to Rob about this match, Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho. Welcome to the match review, everyone, of WrestleMania 19. Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels, and yet again, another all-time classic that we're coming to you with. One that I actually forgot existed until I was doing this rewatch, actually. I am, if I can avoid <laughs> um, hiccuping all over the place... I am here, that's why I keep drinking water, I'm hiccuping bad tonight. I am here with Rob, say hi Rob. Hi. Hi. Uh, we're here to talk about this match. Would you please shut the hell up? Okay, fine, you talk about it then. You do this review by yourself. I don't, you know, that's just, I, I know you're imitating Chris Jericho, but that hurt. I'm, just, you do it yourself, I'm done. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, we're. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, Jericho. <laughs> Um, you just made the list. So, thank you. <laughs> uh, so basically this entire match setup was sort of a clash of eras. Chris Jericho's always looked up to Shawn Michaels, even though ironically they're kind of close in age. Jericho's like five years younger than Shawn Michaels, but they built this match up like he was 20 years younger. Um, well, so Chris Jericho did say that his dream match would be against Shawn Michaels. And... Uh, and of course, Shawn Michaels has been out for like four years. So right, and he was like, you know, oh, Michaels is coming back, yada yada. He always looked up to Shawn Michaels, like mm -hmm. even you know, in the early WWE days when he was with the Rockers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, Chris Jericho said numerous times he's like, yeah, I was like visibly getting sick before the match because he wanted it to be a banger mm -hmm. and then he went out and Shawn Michaels is like take it easy and then all of a sudden they put out this fucking banger of a match yeah all time classic I mean the chemistry the chemistry these two had was insane mm -hmm. the back and forth the counters I mean it's like they knew each other's playbook heart to heart cover to cover page to page um some of the best counters i've ever seen that uh kick off the turnbuckle knocking Shawn michaels off the apron like that i mean their just... counters reminded me of uh brett and owen hart mm -hmm. you know it was just it was so fluid oh it was so fluid so perfectly timed um they knew exactly where to position each, uh, each other they knew mm -hmm. exactly where to position themselves uh they knew how they wanted to hit it they knew how they wanted to fall everything worked perfectly um uh, i think my favorite thing about this match was just how sudden a lot of the counters were like mm -hmm. you know i i hate to use the term out of nowhere before we get to randy orton but they were really out of nowhere um, you know, he would kick him and all of a sudden he's in the walls of Jericho where he would jump off the top and all of a sudden he's caught and he's in the walls or the walls would get thrown out the ring. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels has him in a pinning combination. Like it was so sick to see the, 
snap reactions the two had. I mean, of course, you're working with two vets. Like, I know the story is that Jericho is so much younger than Shawn Michaels, and he looks up to his elder, if you will. But Man of a thousand holds. Exactly. They really are. And, and, and it was absolutely excellent selling, excellent execution. Um, I thought the, the Sweet Chin music out of nowhere... When like when like trip when uh triple H fuck when when like Chris Jericho is like fumbling around all of a sudden bam out of nowhere like the camera work for this match from an entertainment value and from an audience perspective added so much more mm. to this match because obviously people in the arena could see him getting up for it as far as I was concerned the man was still on the ground the camera turns and a bang he's on a, he, he kicks his head off like it, it was so. So fucking good. So mm. fucking fluid. It was just absolutely perfect to me. Um, I would say I have no notes, but I've got an entire laundry list of them here, but they're all good. Um, yeah, the out of nowhere em- emphatic Sweet Chin music. Um, Chris Jericho's rendition of the Sweet Chin, or at least the setup, mm-hmm. you know, with his little feet shuffle. That was that was dope. Uh, I said the counter top rope acrobatic flip roll over pin whatever the fuck Sean did to win was insane. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the hell he did. The, the match was a classic, but ironically enough, I never heard about it until doing this rewatch. I was blown away at how good this match was. Do you have any idea why this match isn't talked about more? Is it because there's so many classics on this card? Or so many good iconic matches on this card. Like, why is this match never talked about? Uh, so my ratings, my lowest was a C plus, and that was the Triple H versus Booker T match. Mm-hmm. But most of the matches had either a B, a B plus, or an A. Mm-hmm. And I think this match may have just gotten overshadowed because the rest of the card was just absolutely stacked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from a wrestling community standpoint, I know that this match has been talked about a lot, but I know it's not on everyone's top five. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So right. maybe that's why. I mean, I thought this match was phenomenal, but, you know, there's been a ton of five star matches. Well, you know, it's going to get lost. In our somewhere. opinion, not according to Dave Melzer, but yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, like, this match is just iconic. This was probably Jericho's best match, I think. I don't know if he has a better one than this, but this is definitely his best so far. Are you talking about WrestleMania-wise? Yeah, oh, in general. Like, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember a Jericho match that left me going, yeah, that was, that was, that was a five-star match. That was, that was a perfect match. I mean, I would say when he won the Undisputed Championship. I mean, that was good. I, I gave that an A, I'm pretty sure, but mm-hmm. this match, like, I left this match going, this is this is, this is is peak Jericho here. Mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels had delivered performances like this in the past, mm-hmm. but I left this going, this is peak Jericho. I don't know how he goes above this. I can definitely see him going down from this, and he is. But this was like, he's at the top now. Like, there's there's no, he's at the, he's, he's reached the mountaintop with this match. Um... Yeah, gosh, this is just, it, it's a match that I really don't have a comparison to as far as, like, I know we typically, like, try to talk about, well, with this match here, what about this match? Or who did you see here? Like, this was the perfect combination of two wrestlers that meshed together perfectly. This is my modern, well, it's no longer modern, but at the time, you know, growing up, mm-hmm. I saw this, like, the modern day Savage versus Steamboat. Mm-hmm. That's how I saw it, which is still one of my top matches ever, mm-hmm. ever, ever done. Um, but I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Just, just the the sheer chemistry these two have, the the flow of the match itself. I can definitely, definitely agree with with that point there. Um, what would you say is your favorite part of the match? Because I've kind of already spoiled mine. That out of nowhere, sweet chain music. But what would you say is like your highlight of this match? Uh, I mean, the sweet chin music out of nowhere, sure, but mm, I would say the counters, Mm -hmm. like, it's not like a specific, oh, this happened out of nowhere, uh, moment, 
even though that's yours, but mine are the counters. The counters just blew me the fuck away, dude. Mm -hmm. And I was just so mesmerized. Like, usually I'll have, like, a talking point on a match here and there. But this is one of those, I was so freaking drawn. You're just watching and you're that, just like, I, I can't take my eyes off it. Like, I, like I'm, this is this is one where I'm happy there's a long draw between this match and the next, mm -hmm. so I could type all this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it was one of those... I probably got, I'm luckily I checked on Peacock to see where I was before the ad started because mm -hmm. I was like, oh snap, I'm like 85% of the way through. I got to come up with something to talk about. I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk about the counters because that's what's got me like. Mm -hmm. I, so, I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is definitely an iconic match. We're, the, the, the manias are banging right now. The manias are banging. That's for sure. Uh, they're having mania babies. Lots of mania babies. Those are the duds. The baby, the baby manias. Yeah, those mm. are the future. Future manias are being set up because of how good these manias are. Like kids are watching this, and teenagers are watching this, going, "I'm a, that's what I'm gonna be one day, Dad." And 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 those little manias, they grow up to be what we get now. Um, thank God. Yeah, I'm. Thank God these manias banged back in the early two thousands, so we could get the manias we have now. Yeah. That's right. Adopt, don't shop. What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Back to me. <laughs> so yeah, as we said, 10 out of 10 match. Absolutely phenomenal. We'll put it there. And move right on, because you guys have heard me and Rob talk about it already. Next up, we have Triple H versus Booker T for the World Heavyweight Championship. I know the story of this match is not good. Uh, the entire build-up to this match is basically Triple H degrading Booker T, calling into question all of his accolades prior to WWE, in WWE. There is a lot of racial undertones that also go into this build-up, which are not good. It also ends in Triple H winning and effectively burying Booker T down the card because of it. So not only was the build not good, uh, the result ended up causing pretty much unrecoverable damage to, to Booker T's career as a main eventer. He had some flashes as a mid-card guy, had some flashes as a tag team guy, never seemed to be able to recover enough to really make it back up the card to the main event scene. So that alone makes this match pretty disappointing. But the match itself was pretty goddamn good. Uh, I thought Booker T definitely held his own against Triple H, who at this point was basically becoming a perennial main eventer, even if he is on the mid-card here. The three matches coming up next are just too good to really go in front of them, so I can understand its placement on the card here. Um, I thought that uh, the amount of near falls made this match extremely dramatic, extremely suspenseful. I thought the ring work here was excellent. Booker selling the knee injury was perfect. He showed he could hang. Um, but again, horrible build, horrible conclusion. The story was dreadful. Um, the leg failing Booker worked into a pedigree. And then on top of all that, Triple H took 30 seconds to cover him for the win. A 30 second crawl, and it didn't result in the kick out those long drawn out crawls typically do. Uh, he actually got the three count up to doing it, which just felt pointless to me. Like, just fucking pin him. Like, there's no need for this. The injury work is good, but I obviously rate this based on a lot of factors, not just in ring work. As you could tell, Rob gave this match a C+. I thought the match itself was a 7 out of 10, maybe even an 8. The story of this match was fucking horrible. 2 out of 10, horrid. I gave this match a 6 overall as well, so in the end, me and Rob ended up actually meeting at the same spot, but for different reasons. Rob thought the match was a 6 out of 10, I thought the match was borderline 8 out of 10, but the story and build-up ruined really any type of enjoyment I can get out of this match, so... 6 out of 10 is where it's going to go. Also, Jerry Lawler got fucking awful on commentary during this entire match. Just absolute borderline racist with some of his comments. I know he's supposed to be the heel commentator. Absolute fucking garbage in this match. Um, honestly, I haven't really enjoyed him as a commentator for much of these match reviews that he's been in. Um, 
in hindsight, not the best. So, a lot of factors working against this match that end up putting it at that sixer. Next up, we have Hulk Hogan versus Vince McMahon in a street fight. Uh, the beginning of this match was typical heel domination by Vince, with Hogan having a good power comeback. Um, I thought the chair shot that Vince McMahon took uh, was fucking amazing. Um, he was busted open hard, and he bled. I mean, the, sh the street fight kicks off from there. Chair shots galore. Vince busts open Hogan. The leg drop off a steel ladder was an insane, insane spot for Vince. Uh, the image of his bloody face creeping over the apron as he climbs back into the ring to go for the finish or what was a near fall finish. That shit, it literally looked like Satan was coming out of the ground. Just uh, absolute, just crimson face. He, he got fucked up in this match. Um, Piper coming out of nowhere was fucking stupid. Uh, he comes out of nowhere and then he hits Hogan. Not only was he not... Uh, not only did he not factor into the match, he wasn't hinted at. There was no, almost no reason for him to be involved. He just was there for a crowd reaction that honestly wasn't even that big. And then he hit Hogan and then walks away. There's no reason. There's no build-up. There's no post-match feud. Uh, I don't even think it's even mentioned again from here on out. It's just a random spot that doesn't fit. Doesn't make sense. It was dumb. Honestly, I would have given this match an A had that shit not happened. Uh, Hogan, of course, kicked out. Uh, we got the first ever Hulk up that I was happy to see, which, again, has not been the case for many WrestleManias. Usually when he hooks up, I lose interest. But this man, I was very glad for him to hook up and beat the shit out of Vince McMahon because I love seeing Vince McMahon get the shit beat out of him. It is great. It is wonderful to see every single time. Um, beats the rep that screwed him before, apparently. Uh, there was an Ottawa rep that he screwed, or Montreal rep that he screwed over, which was pretty cool. Nice little hint. I guess I didn't see that match, obviously, but it was a nice tie-in to this match. Three leg drops to get a Hogan win, just to really seal it in. In retrospect of the previous match, the story of this match makes it better than in, better than the in-ring work. Actually, a fantastic back and forth for two older men that made the story work even better. I gave this match 8 out of 10. I love this match, which God it might snow. This is now two Hogan main two. Hogan Mania matches in a row that I've actually enjoyed. Um, Rob gave this match a, a B as well. I gave it an 8 out of 10, so even if he meant to give it a 7, it is going to average out to that 8. And as you can tell, this card is stacking up to be an all-fucking-timer. It has been a great show so far. Next up, we have The Rock versus Stone Cold. The trifecta is now complete. This is uh, Stone Cold's final wrestling match, at least for a while, and at least as a full-time performer. He obviously comes back a lot as a guest referee for a lot of matches, uh, but this is the first time in really the last... Oh, sorry, this is the last time that you see him as a full-time performer. The Rock is coming back from filming Scorpion King and bringing out the Hollywood Rock persona behind him. Uh, honestly... Did not realize this until the commentators mentioned it and I looked into it more. Stone Cold almost died the day before this match. He was in the hospital on an IV drip. So he came from almost dying to coming out of this match and putting on a fucking all-time classic once again. Um, personally, I find their X7 match better. I think their X7 match was peak. Um, this was still a phenomenal match, though. Uh, the story was powerful. The Rock was talking about how he had never beaten Stone Cold because every time he fought Stone Cold for the titles, Stone Cold would come out the victor. The Rock finally gets his moment and beats Stone Cold in this match. Of course, it's not for a title, but he finally accomplished effectively his career goal, which was beating Stone Cold at WrestleMania. It just took three times. Um, easily the best finish of the trilogy. Rock gets his win. Stone Cold leaves into the sunset. I gave it an 8 out of 10. You can tell that Steve Austin just can't go like he used to. Due to the mounting injuries, of course his health scare before the event altogether, Rock also seemed a bit slower, 
but I couldn't tell if it was because it was out of practice because he had gone to Hollywood recently, or if he was trying to be extra careful with Austin because of Austin's health issues. It's really hard to say, but it definitely seemed like he's being much more careful and slower than he normally is. It didn't hurt this match to a degree where it's no longer fun to watch. I agree with Rob. He also gave it an 8 out of 10 as well. So it's going to the 8 out of 10 range. It could have been a 9. Maybe had some factors not been there. But you saw in Stone Cold's match against Razor Ramon the previous year at WrestleMania 18 that he was losing some steps because of injuries. So this just kind of continued that trend, unfortunately. I was glad to see Stone Cold get out of this in one piece. And uh, very happy to see him uh, enjoy retirement, even though he never actually gets to stay retired. They keep pulling him back in for guest referee spots. But it's always nice to see Stone Cold. Always nice. And finally, the main event of the evening, Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle for the WWE Heavyweight title, which Brock Lesnar would win. Now, this is obviously before Brock Lesnar um, fell into the controversial stages of his career, which he's in now, uh, where he may actually be involved in some pretty shitty things. So again, we're commenting on the Brock Lesnar of this match, not as a whole, based on the accusations against him. Obviously, there's rumors he may be coming back, so maybe those accusations were not well-based, but we do not know that for certain, so I will resist commenting on Brock Lesnar, the person, and focus solely on commenting on Brock Lesnar, the wrestler, in this match in particular. I've never been a huge Brock Lesnar fan in terms of wrestling, at least his second run, um, the Beast Incarnate run, if you will. But Brock Lesnar of old was pretty goddamn good. Uh, you could tell he was. You could tell he had that amateur background, along with Kurt Angle. And this match showed it. Uh, technical masterclass, tons of heavy bumps. Brock Lesnar when he actually wrestled, and didn't just throw his opponent around the ring like he does nowadays. I thought Angle uh, was kind of a, a, a teaching lesson, if you will, for Suplex City, uh, because Angle basically took him to Suplex City in this match. Um, I thought that the every move that these two did looked powerful, looked intense, had a purpose, had meaning, and it consistently looked like they were actually getting worn down, which is always my favorite types of matches. Uh, the middle of the match felt a little weak, but it also felt like the crowd was fatigued from the same high-energy card. You could tell that this card was sacked. I mean, there's no denying it, especially... Uh, given the two matches that came before this one being Hulk Hogan and The Rock and Stone Cold. So it kind of makes sense for the crowd to be fatigued at this point. But you could really tell that middle was just very weak, and very quiet, and very calm. Uh, I thought it did pick up in the end. The Shooting Star Press botch could have easily been a top five spot of all time had he not been too far away uh, from Kurt Angle when he did it and basically land on his head, kind of headbutt Kurt Angle because of it. I thought Angle played it off really well. Third F5 of the evening ends the match. A good showcase of the two best grapplers, the two best true amateur wrestlers. They definitely showed it off, especially at the beginning and the end with how they were kind of like slipping in and out of each other's moves. But had he landed that shooting star press, 9 out of 10. Easy 9 out of 10 for me. Um, the fact a man that big did it in the first place uh, was phenomenal. But I gave this match a 7 out of 10. Based on all aspects. Um, I thought that the poor middle, the crowd reaction wasn't there, the bot shooting star press. It was a great main event. I thought that it was less than what the internet felt it was, and also clearly less than what Rob felt it was. Rob gave this match an A, an absolutely phenomenal match to Rob. I gave it a 7. Now, I don't know if Rob intended to give this match a 10 or a 9, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, this match is going to end up getting bumped up to an 8 out of 10, even if he gave it a 10. A 17 divided by 2 is still an 8.5, so I guess that would have brought it up to a 9, but in this case, we're going to leave it at that 8, um, because I feel like it just, it, it fits, it fits that, that range a little bit better here, assuming that Rob had to give it a 9. Um, if he went to give it a 10, I mean, ultimately, it's not like it would matter, but so much. This, this card is still absolutely stacked, so, um, yeah, 
let me go ahead and calculate the uh, match average here for us. Give me one second here. And this nine match card ends up averaging out to a 7.56. We officially have a new top WrestleMania, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, give me one second. I can actually check on that. So WrestleMania 17 was the top one. Yes, we gave WrestleMania a 7 out of 10. Um, so yeah, this one is going to end up being the new the new best. 7.56. So incredible card from start to finish. Absolutely nothing average or below. This is peak wrestling in my opinion. WrestleMania 19. You are the current champion. I hope you have a long reign. And you will, because I feel like every single WrestleMania after this has, like, one classic and then one absolute fucking garbage match. So I don't think they'll ever get to above a 7.5 because of that. Um, the 10 and the one, the 10 and the 1s and zeros are going to offset each other. So that's just a little teaser to look into as you're watching these reviews. But otherwise, I hope you all had a fantastic time. And I will see you tomorrow for WrestleMania XX, WrestleMania 20. Have a good night, guys.